44th All India Cell Biology Conference and International Symposium on the Molecular and Cellular Insights of Human Disease. This conference is being organized by the Department of Biochemistry, University of Kashmir, in collaboration with the Indian Society of Cell Biology. On behalf of the organizing committee, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to you all for gracing this conference with your esteemed presence. We hope that this conference will present a fantastic opportunity to not only share knowledge and experiences, but also as a beginning of long and promising collaborations. The backdrop of the beautiful campus of university will add to the pleasure of the conference and provide lasting memories beyond science. I thank you all for being present in the inaugural session of this important event as it marks the 44th session of All India Cell Biology Conference Series. It is indeed a great privilege for the University of Kashmir in general and Department of Biochemistry in particular to hold this prestigious event in collaboration with Indian Society of Cell Biology. The conference theme, Molecular and Cellular Insights of Human Diseases, is of immense significance to public health as well as to the scientific community. In medicine and health, the solution to problems require intervention at the cell and the molecular level. This conference will deliberate upon the recent trends, discoveries, and new approaches in combating diseases through cell science and molecular biology. And this will help to address the queries and provide solutions for confronting various scientific issues. Looking at the participation, we are of course very pleased and humbled. We are highly grateful to the invited speakers who have come from different parts of the country to share their knowledge and research with young and budding minds. We warmly welcome them all. We sincerely hope that this conference will be a great success, not only in terms of sharing scientific knowledge and experience, but also it will set a platform for research collaborations and friendship among participants. I would like to take this opportunity to share a few things about our department. The department was established exactly 40 years back with a vision of channelizing the best scientific resource to the emerging and most advanced areas of research in biological science. Today, it's a dream coming true. The Department of Biochemistry is one of the reputed and most sought after departments in the area of life sciences in this region. We have highly qualified, internationally trained, and vibrant group of faculty members who carry out research in diverse areas of molecular and cellular biology with regional and national relevance. Over the years, the department has excelled in its research activities, which is reflected by the publications in high-impact journals. In the past few years alone, the department has received extramural grants of about 15 crores from major funding agencies like DBT, DST, ICMR, and DHR. And this has enabled us to substantially strengthen the research base and teaching infrastructure. The department is also supported by the DST FIST program. Further, the inter intramural support received from the university has been instrumental in improving the research capacity and infrastructure of the department. The department has a distinction of producing renowned scientists who are settled at prestigious research institutions like Harvard University, University of California, University of Texas, Oxford University, National Institute of Health, Olinda Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, ISC Bangalore, 
IIT Kanpur to name a few. Besides excelling in research, the faculty from our department have served on prestigious administrative positions, including vice chancellors, registrars, deans of institutes, directors of various institutes, deans of schools, and heads of departments. The faculty of our department also have the distinction of initiating several programs at the university level, which blossomed into departments like biotechnology, clinical biochemistry, and nanotechnology. Our master's program is one of the sought after programs in the university and has an attraction for the most talented and meritorious lot of students. The program has, over the years, got recognition at the national and the international level. Apart from the academics, the department has also contributed on social services as well. In the recent unprecedented COVID-19 crisis, our research scholars voluntarily offered their helping hand to the UT administration and were actively involved in the COVID containment efforts. I sincerely appreciate and thank them all. I extend a warm welcome to all the esteemed guests on the dais and delegates who are present here as well as those who are there online. Uh, the Society thanks the University of Kashmir and specifically Dr. Shahida Andrabi for restarting the major activity of the Society, though this is a smaller version of it after a forced quarantine. Uh, the Society had decided to wait it out rather than going online so that we could get back to a physical meeting. And uh, look, we are here today uh, looking forward to an uh, academic feast and in a sit in a, in this and also soaking in this scenic beauty. Um, I'll take a few minutes to introduce the society, though many of you uh, who are present here may be aware of its, are probably aware of its genesis and its history. The ISCV has its uh, uh, genesis in an annual meetings of a small and informal uh, club which was called as the Cell Biology Club which in the late 1960s held annual meetings, I think called as the All India Cell Biology Conference, in which some of the eminent regulars were professors S.R.V. Rao, V.C. Shah, C.M.S. Das, H.Y. Mohan Ram, A.S. Mukherjee, S.K. Sen, T.R. Sharma, A.N. Vise, representing universities across Delhi, Kolkata, Ahmedabad, Bombay, Banaras, and so on. Uh, these conferences uh, led to the formation of the Indian Society of Cell Biology, which held its first meeting in uh, January 1977 at the Department of Zoology, Banaras Hindu University, organized by Professor Tikaram Sharma under the esteemed guidance of our first president, Professor S.P. Rai Chaudhary. Uh, it is perhaps relevant to quote Professor S.P. Rai Chaudhary for, from his presidential address of 1977, which nicely sort of highlights the role emphasized by the society at that point of time. I just quote him, uh, he said, to foster teaching and research in cell biology in my mind are the most important tasks confronting us. The only remedy is to have graded course in the molecular aspects of cell biology from BSc onwards for the simple reason that the cell is the common denominator of all the living forms. We should realize that cell biology cannot remain at the periphery of biology course as an esoteric subject, must, but must become, come at the center, and around it the whole course should be built up. He went on to state, the society, that's the Cell Biology Society, should make an attempt not only to propagate this realization, but take effective step to bring out the effective change. This was spoken in 1977, and I think these words retain their relevance even today. Of course, uh, your cell biology has come a long way, and ISCB has played its part in various ways along this route. Apart from the annual conference, the society also supports outreach programs and workshops for students and teachers, and also publishes a newsletter. As a part of its activity, the society 
recognizes contributions made by cell biologists in the form of award lectures. Professor S. P. Rai Choudhury's 75th birthday endowment lecture, Professor Jyotirmoy Das memorial lecture, and for younger scientists, this Professor Rita Mulherkar lecture award. These lectures are usually held on alternate years, but because of the lockdown, we will, in this conference, we will be having all the three lectures. Major emphasis of the society has been to support and encourage students. Students' participation is taken very seriously by the society, and every year during the annual conference, there is always a tussle to retain the space for students' presentation, be it in the oral or in the platform. This conference is one where, uh, as when I was a PhD student way in the early 1980s, we all looked forward to coming to this uh, annual conference. This was the one conference where we all went, because this was one place where we used to meet our friends and counterparts from different places of the country. We had no WhatsApp, no none of these fast connectivities. So that was once a year meeting to figure out what others were doing, not only in their academic spheres, but also in their, uh, in their personal spheres. So the, the, this conference allowed for making those interactions at an early stage and still does that. And many of those interactions and friends that we made still stay on. So with these words, I welcome you all again to this wonderful city. Thank you for hosting it and looking forward to two interesting days. Thank you. We all know that the advancement in science and technology since the advent of industrial revolution probably has led to enormous knowledge and improvement in human abilities to curb the spread of deadly diseases, deadly diseases and also we witnessed it in the latest COVID-19. Without this knowledge and the efforts of mankind would have not been in a position to address the issues of disastrous infectious diseases and therefore there is a dire need for a strong partnership between science and society. We all know that humankind or mankind has made a manifold progress in the information technology but somehow, I, this is my personal observation, that somehow in the biological science and medical sciences probably we have not gained such a space what information technology has gained on universe. So probably the societal needs and we as human beings other than the biological science people, we definitely look forward to a advancement. For example, we see that the young boys or young men die all of a sudden without even knowing what is the cause of their death. Even at sometimes we see that the students or the young boys are playing in the ground and there's a certain cardiac arrest, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. So we may definitely, as scientists, we as a common beings look forward to such type of efforts which can curb such type of issues in the society. 44th All India Cell Biological Conference and International Symposium on Molecular and Cellular Insights of Human Diseases is the best platform for the researchers from all over India to address and present their novel findings in the field of cellular and molecular biology. The conference like this sparks more curiosity in the minds of nation builders and also develops the scientific temper and paves way for them to explore in scientific world and contribution towards the betterment of human mankind. And on as registrar, I will say that the University of Kashmir is a university which is at present NAC A plus graduate university with a CGPA score of 3.31. And uh, I must accept uh, as registrar of this university that the major part played in the accreditation of our university has been, to be on honestly speaking, there is a major contribution from the science departments and the research done by the 
school of biological sciences, school of applied sciences, and all the faculties which fall in the science faculty. At present, we at University of Kashmir, we are now NRF ranking about the top 100 universities of the country. We fear at the 53rd. And within our university, we try to create the infrastructure and other resources which will be, which will go a long way to address the issues of research at the University of Kashmir. We are a university which has been declared as Center for Excellence by University Grants Commission in the biodiversity and in the biodiversity, we have an excellent center by DST in the glaciology also. We do have a lot of funds. We get a lot of funds also from uh, under RUSA. We have got a got lot of funds. Major of that is in the science only. We are a good contributors in the FIST, in the SPARC, in major research projects which are carried at the national or international level. And under the leadership of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, we try to facilitate and we try to create the infrastructure which will go a long way in solving certain issues at our university level. We have ready, we are going to inaugurate in few days or few weeks, we are going to inaugurate the first research scholars of University of Kashmir, which will host, which will inhabit almost 500 plus research scholars. And we are, have established a facility for international scholars also. We have created some 20 rooms where we have given certain facilities which are required for the international scholars or international students. So we are simultaneously creating such facilities for girls students. This is for the boys. We are creating some facilities for the boys also. And we have established a center for interdisciplinary research here on the, on the University of Kashmir. So we are, we are trying to create the facilities for particularly for science faculty. We are trying to create the best infrastructure within our scores or within our limited resources. And uh, we are trying to reach out to the national and international funding agencies, which will help us in developing the one, one, one of the best, because, because, because this university has a distinction to be the oldest university in this part of the world. So uh, I hope that under the new leadership of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, we will, be try, we will try to give the best facilities, particularly to the science students and science scholars at our University of Kashmir. Uh, distinguished guests from abroad as well as from different parts of India, scholars, students, and other participants. It's a real pleasure to participate in this inaugural function because uh, cell is the backbone of almost all the biological sciences. And since I am also from the same field, once I understand what we studied when we were students of college or of the PG courses, the concept of studying cell, looking at cell, understanding the cell cycle, etc., was very simple those days. But the advancement of science has opened up our mind to look at what cell is all about, what the role of cell as such is in not only monitoring, but also sometimes modifying the cycle of a cell. Initially, we were looking at how a cell divides, how multiplication takes place, how different organs get formed. Now we at present look at how we can manipulate the cell cycle, how we can manage the cell cycle, how that manipulation management can help us to modify the overall cycling pattern, not only of the cell itself, but also of the organism as such. We sometimes even manipulate in creating organisms. In biological sciences, especially in botany and agricultural sciences, we talk in terms of synthetic crops. And those synthetic crops are literally manufactured by selecting the donor and receptor and creating something that is, as per our requirements, suitable. About 30, 40 years ago, this concept was not existent, but automatically the advancement has shown to us or opened up newer and newer fields as to how, after understanding what the cell is, what the cell cycle is, how we can utilize that knowledge to modify things. I remember when I joined uh, MSc Botany, when we experimented with simple meiosis and mitosis of a cell, it took us almost three hours to look at that cell as such. Now, 
using seven times we can within a span of a fraction of a second look at what is the overall phenomenon within the cell. This advancement has opened up newer fields, not only for us who have not studied that at the time of actually getting masters or research degrees, but now we have tried to understand that phenomenon and try to educate our students as to how they can in turn understand the concept of a cell, concept of assessing how a disease in a cell is actually starting, how we can manipulate that cell's behavior, not only to resist to that disease, but also develop a strategy to become a protective layer in a particular organ as such. These concepts have actually widened our understanding as to basis of science, that is the cell, can in turn widen our understanding of almost all the concepts. And the different types of diseases that we see that are actually now a common phenomenon almost every year a newer and newer diseases identified and we try to develop schemes, methods, protocols to resist as well as to overcome those diseases. Last couple of years have been a major issue about the COVID, how we can understand the COVID phenomena, how we can develop strategy of protecting ourselves against COVID. It took us some time, but now, thanks to the researchers, thanks to those who have invested huge time span to understand the cycle as such, and they have given us predictive remedies to control that particular disease, which was actually spread at a speed at which we never left our homes also. Almost everybody was house arrest for a particular duration to protect not only himself, but all the other family members. Now, such understanding of cells, metabolism within a cell, developing resistance within a cell will help us to see what our contributions can be in educating not only ourselves, but our progenies, our dependents, as to what phenomena we can follow. Every day, we read wonderful articles as to what has been discovered, look at the experimentation designs, look at the discoveries to induce resistances, to overcome certain problems and ailments. And we, at that time, only quote the names. This is the medicine, this is the remedial measures. But we do we try to assess how much has been invested in understanding the cause of that disease, understanding how we can develop a resistance or a resistance protocol for that disease. There, obviously, biologists play a fundamental role in not only understanding, but also trying to develop a major, a method, a strategy to overcome such diseases. In such conferences, in such workshops, sharing of concepts, sharing of ideas, as well as trying to discuss and draft newer strategies can help us to not only overcome what we are facing, but develop plans wherein any future crisis that may arise, that may think may arise, we can be ready to develop a protective protocol for these. In almost every country, every state, every laboratory nowadays, experimentation is not only to overcome what we are facing, but also to see what can be the probability in future so that we can be able to develop resistance protocol for these. Such themes will obviously not only help us but induce in our progeny, in our students, scholars, newer themes, newer plans, so that we can be able to be resistant as well as educate our progenies to be resistant to what they may face. I use the term may because nobody is sure as to what is going to happen. And such conferences obviously widens up our mind and helps us to exchange our information, exchange our knowledge, and try to share that with our progenies also. And in such gatherings, where people from different countries, different states are here to discuss this, will automatically help us to draft a proposal and highlight the findings in the form of an outcome of this conference, which can bear fruit, not only for the Department of Biochemistry, for which I have a very special uh, appreciation that they have organized this conference for the first time in the University of Kashmir, but also for all the participants who can help us to draft a plan or propose something that can help us to resist to such diseases. I hope that uh, this two-day deliberations, some new outcomes that actually can be not only highlighted but discussed as well as findings can recommend a new plan, a new strategy to not only resist but also to induce in ourselves a concept of being futuristic so that we can be able to 
sustain our culture, sustain our techniques, sustain our future as such so that we can be actually re regarded as those who have been pioneers in inducing the knowledge in youngsters that we can and we will always be futuristic in developing such strategies. I hope and pray all the participants and all the special invitees will be able to elaborately discuss the plan and at the end submit a sort of a concluding report which can be highlighted not only at the University of Kashmir level but also at the national level. Best of luck to all the participants. Respect for the delegates, research scholars, students, ladies and gentlemen. I know only that much cell biology which every student who goes to school for a couple of years, I don't know anything beyond that. But out of my deep interest in some areas of biological sciences and little bit of formal education in biological sciences, I would like to trace out some or point out some historical milestones in biological sciences that pertain to the theme of this conference. What I feel major part of the deliberations of this conference will revolve around genetics to be more specific to human genetics because every disorder, every disease that we would like to work on, that we would like to put our hands on, we have to see towards those, we have to peep into those through genes only or through chromosomes only. Mendelian concept, it remained say unattended or ignored for about a couple of decades. Around for four decades it remained unattended till the beginning of 20th century when the chromosomal theory was put forth. And again this period coincided or it was the same decade when the concepts of inborn errors of metabolism were discussed. Garrard probably, if I am correct, in the first decade of the 20th century, he discussed very frequently, he discussed these inborn errors of metabolism, phenylketonuria, albinism, cystinuria, pentasuria, and so many other inborn errors of metabolism. And probably in the mid of 20th century, that did see some advances, of course some turbulences also. Because this is the era when genetics emerged as an independent subject which laid the foundation for these disciplines for understanding the molecular basis of the diseases. Turbulence, what I mean to say by turbulence, this was that era when it was understood that uh, how characters, they are transmitted from parents to offsprings and this period coincided with the concept of or the, with that the, the, the period when concept of eugenics emerged and in some parts of the world when there was some sort of controlled that reproduction, people with those inferior characters or with some those disorders they were not allowed to reproduce. The, what's, what, what we mean by eugenics? It was an immoral, unethical act. If we see, critically analyze the develops, developments in biological sciences that did take place after that era, certain developments, lot of fingers are being raised towards all those things. Like tail ring, genetic tail ring, or using this CRISPR CAS, people do raise fingers towards all these things. Doesn't it tend amount or doesn't it amount to same eugenics, which somewhere in the mid of 20th centuries people were doing? I think biological scientists have to seriously take these things into consideration because it's ultimately anything, whatever we do, whatever we produce in the labs, it must have then social acceptance. If the research outcome, if it doesn't have a social acceptance, I think uh, our efforts get wasted. 
that's why multidisciplinary approaches are very essential before framing our objectives before conceiving any project we must join hands with social scientists so that probable outcome of any research it doesn't face any roadblocks we, it doesn't face any that rough weather with all these things i wish good luck and uh, hope that the three, these three day delib day, uh, deliberations will be scientifically, academically, and intellectually productive. Thank you very much. I now take the privilege of welcoming our chief guest and honorable vice chancellor, Professor Nilo Khan, on this dais to address our audience. Thank you very much. I really congratulate. Uh, everyone who is connected with this, uh, particularly the head of the department, uh, Dr. Shajrul Amin, uh, Dr. Shahida Andrabi, and other uh, team of their department for organizing this particular uh, program at national level. I know uh, it's not easy. Uh, I can see uh, it has come to its uh, logical conclusion by uh, inviting and uh, you know having so many participants from outside the uh, valley i am happy to see a number of women participants as well uh, because uh, you know i always look forward to have women participation in any of the conferences i am really delighted to see them and they have come all uh, way uh, to uh, attend this particular conference. I must tell my research scholars and my students uh, that it's a great opportunity for them to interact with the scientists of uh, this great uh, reputation from all over the country. Uh, I uh, wish they get well connected with them uh, and take the advantages uh, of their expertise as mentoring and, uh, you know, further having the connectivity pertaining to research and academics. I think these types of platforms give us opportunity to be connected with the reputed scientists and take advantage of their expertise and reputation. University of Kashmir is always open uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to use it as a platform for any type of academic or research activity we have wonderful infrastructure, we have wonderful resources, we have wonderful manpower to manage these types of uh, activities. And I'm sure, as I said, and the earlier speakers also said, that uh, we wish uh, from this platform, from this particular conference, um, wonderful uh, recommendations are put forth for policy <laughs> implication. And uh, as my earlier speaker said, that it's a very important and relevant theme that has been chosen. And uh, we as researchers and we as in academia have a responsibility to discuss on these issues and give our recommendations and further uh, move towards uh, more uh, research uh, for betterment of our society. Uh, with these words, once again, welcome to all our delegates who have joined us from outside the university, uh, from uh, all over India, and uh, some delegates are online also uh, from abroad. Uh, everyone is uh, welcome, and I wish we have a very fruitful two days of deliberations pertaining to research and academia. And I was very happy to know that we have a special session for our students. And they'll be award, they will be awarded with certificates and cash prizes. I think any of the conference of this uh, level uh, having such a special uh, you know, uh, setup, such a special session, for uh, students speaks the consideration and uh, uh, you know uh, they have for research scholars and students and I must tell my students uh, please uh, you know uh, rope in some mentors for you so that you can really uh, be connected with these words thank you very much and once more congratulations to the team who have collaborated and the two team who have worked uh, from within the university uh, and I uh, wish all the success uh, for this program 
and uh, definitely we'll have more such programs in future also. Thank you very much.